This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They are world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that it is freshly roasted after you order. They are fair trade certified, USD organic, and integrity is their core value. Coffees come in K cup, gift cards available, and free shipping over $50. Stay tuned to the middle of the episode where Gerald will tell you a few of the amazing flavors that the Iron Bean has over at ironbeancoffee.com. And that is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. And yes, Jared, we do need a clap emoji. <laughs> and Austin, or excuse me, uh, Gangland already named it for us as well. Oh, hi, YouTube. How you guys doing? We're just talking to the Discord. <laughs> Doing ad reads, yep. talking to the Discord, hanging yeah. out. So we're doing, we're we're doing recordings. It's a little bit different. We're actually recording on a Saturday night, and we they don't, just they don't, they don't need they don't need to know that. I don't know. You know what? Screw them. They don't need to know that. Yeah, that's right. Hey, YouTube folks. Screw. You see, it doesn't matter because no one watches the no one watches the <laughs> uh, basketball episodes anyway. So, like, to the few people who are watching, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Gangland, we will call it the clap. Toys, toys a good weekend when Ohio State beats Michigan. But that's the, that's the only <laughs> that's the only thing we're going to really talk about because uh, there will be no there will be no uh, Super Bowl talk here. Maybe, right, maybe Kyle, later Kyle, in the week. Kyle, maybe Kyle. Kyle. But let's get started. It's time to start the episode. Go barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sleepcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Ohio State wins over Michigan. It's always a good. It's you always feel good after that. How are you doing? You know, Kyle, this is the first time in which the basketball team will be rewarded with gold jewelry for beating Michigan. They're they're doing golden jerseys now. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Which, like, I was just, like, surprised that that's never been a thing. You know what I mean? Like, but I get it. Like, it's just, it's it's not the same. It's, you you, you love beating tough. Michigan in any sport, but it's not the same. Especially since, like, you play twice in a year. So that kind of. Well, not, not even, not even every year. Uh, it's. Actually, I think Ohio State only plays them once this year, I believe. Uh, no, they I don't do think that's true. Twice this year. Nope, they do play them twice this year. Nope, yeah. I think there's some years where they do play them only once. Which is a travesty. Yeah. All right, Jared, so let's let's get into it. Um, before we talk about the uh, Ohio State-Michigan game, we do have to talk about the other egg game that Ohio State had against Rutgers, were they egg game? Were they what's that? Egg. Yeah, they laid an egg. Why would you say other? They defeated Michigan. They did. They did defeat Michigan, but they lost to Rutgers earlier on in the week. Okay, well we're we're mo- I still don't understand what the hell you're talking about, but we're moving forward. <laughs> Yes. See, see, they get it. You, you just no. He corrected you. He said what uh, you were supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Austin. All right. So uh, this was a game think, that Ohio I... State. I think Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. Really should have won this, right? Like they, they should have. They were they were up by. Welcome, Kabuto. You're not even in the damn. Oh, there he is. Okay, hi, hi, Kabuto. They were they were up by what was that? I'm putting my mouse over here. They were up by. Eight points with about under four minutes left, and yeah, and they just completely just wrapped that last four minutes. They didn't, they didn't score at all in in the last four minutes of the game. They stayed at sixty four points until the end, and Rutgers went on a uh, eight. Well, they scored ten straight points to beat Ohio State sixty six to sixty four. Not 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 the way that you. You close out a game there. No, it, it felt like a 
It felt, it felt like a, a, a revisit to last year's team where they just had trouble closing out games where this was like, like you're, you're eight minutes. Oh, excuse me. Eight points. You're eight points up with how much time left was it? Kyle. I'm sorry. What did you just say? Just under four, under four minutes. Yeah. Four up by eight points with four minutes. There, There's no, there, there's no excuse for that. There's no. that's, that's ridiculous to go the last four minutes of the game, not scoring any points and losing by two. That is, that is the definition of not finishing. Yep. It, it is the absolute definition of not finishing. Yeah. Nobody else really stepped up. Um, EJ Liddell had a, he had a, I guess, I guess you would call it a, a blow at below average game. He had 16 points shot under 50% from the field. Uh, he only had six rebounds for the game. It's definitely not, wasn't a, t- a good game overall for Liddell, but nobody else was there to really help out. And we've mentioned this a number of times already. Who is that second person to really step up? Key had 10 points. He was only four for 12. Um, yeah, it's just, who, who's that, who's that second person, Jared? No, I mean, or, I mean, that's, are we going to beat that horse again? I feel like, I feel like we go to that well a lot, right? Who's the second person yeah. on this team? Who's the second person on this team? And well, I guess, I guess Brand, Brandon, Brandon in that game picked, picked it up. He did have 19 points. I was scrolling down. I, I missed him. He, he did have 19 points. Um, he was the, I think the only Ohio state player who shot better than 50% from the field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I mean, it's he, we, I mean, he, he was the first guy. If we're talking about points scored, he was, he was the first guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you get, you get a nice night from Brenham. And by the way, Zed key went double digits in the points. Um, th- th- again, this is a game they should have won. Just, just take a look at the box score, and like Liddell wasn't even that far off from a points perspective. Like you want, like realistically, you want Liddell to be about twenty every game. Would you like him to score more? Of course. Will he score more on some nights? Yes. But like realistically, like where's the floor for him as far as your expectations? And I would say, eighteen. And he was, you know, he was two off of that. So it wasn't like a terrible night. And again, Brenham scores 19 points, which is more than you expect from him. You get a third player in the double digits with Zed Key. Uh, Jamari Wheeler did okay getting eight points. Now, unfortunately, after you get past those four, there are no points scored. Um, So, I mean, that's... That's part of the problem is you had like no depth in scoring. Um, there, there's uh, th- what there were four people who made multiple buckets. Is that correct? One, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. So ev- everyone else on the team, if they scored, they scored one bucket. That's a problem. <laughs> I'm That's s- a problem. Yeah. Well, but but it, let me let me let me play devil's advocate here though. Rutgers is playing some really good basketball. I mean, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Ohio State should have won this. Ohio State should have won this game absolutely. But Rutgers and taken to what they just did um, Saturday night here, Jared. Their past, uh, their past three games, their past three games that they played, they all they all won against a ranked Michigan State, ranked Ohio State, and now a ranked Wisconsin team. And they get to play a ranked Illinois and then a ranked Purdue. We'll see how they do against Illinois Purdue, but I mean, three really good quality wins in a row for Rutgers. So it's Rutgers turn, turning the tide here. They 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 might be a yeah. It, Buckeye Zach said it best. Rutgers might be a legit mid tier team here, and right. and they're and they're getting the wins that they need to right now to impress the the um the tournament committee right now. Yeah. And uh, so maybe we underestimate Rutgers a bit and like, 
It's a February road game in the Big Ten. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that was one thing too. Before before Saturday night, I would say only one one road game since the turn of the year. And I think I think they've only won yeah, they've won three, well now four with the win against Michigan, but they only had three road wins uh all year um in the Big Ten. It's it's tough. It's tough winning on the road. Yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, Kyle, they were winning by eight points with four minutes left. Yes, no, hundred hundred percent. And <laughs> like, we'll, we'll we talk, can we'll sit talk, here we'll and make little, excuses. We'll, but... we'll, we'll talk a little. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the changes that they did to win against Michigan here. But in, in this game here, yeah, it was just a just a piss poor ending, and. We, we we saw we saw that we saw the difference um, in in Saturday night's game here. So I don't want to try to. I think you said it best. I don't want to beat beat the dead horse anymore here with the Rutgers game. It was just game shit. They should have won. Didn't they? Didn't score in the last four minutes. I think I think that I think that's all that needs to be said. Well, I don't know. Like here here's the thing though. If if I can put a bow on it. I, 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 you look at the stats and you don't see a loss here. They did all the things that we said Ohio State needs to do mm-hmm. in order to win games. They had a second scorer, someone who scored actually m- m- more points than Liddell, was technically the first scorer. They went over 50% from behind the arc, they got yeah. <laughs> 40% in their field goal percentage, which is on the low side of what you want, but in an acceptable area. Free throws are an issue. We we can go ahead and say that. Free throws are an issue. But 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 their turnovers, their turnovers were under 10. You know, eight is on the, on the high side of acceptable, but acceptable nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was in Rutgers turned the ball over eight times as well. All of the things we said Ohio State needs to do to win these types of games, they did, except they lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, you got to give credit to Rutgers, too. If you watch those last few possessions, look at look at one of those bottom stats there. Rutgers had nine blocks in that game. And a lot of those right at the end there, there, yeah. there, were, there was a layup. That, there was a couple. There was a layup and there was I think there was a shot within that last four minutes where Rutgers was. They made key blocks there. Absolutely. Yeah. Kyle, let's, uh, we want to talk about the Michigan game. And then I know we have yes. uh, some ask Sloopcast questions. So let's do an early ad break and then let's, uh, let's cover Michigan and do some ask Sloopcast questions on the other sure. side of that ad break. Sure. Let's do that. Let's, let's pick uh, Jerry. Let's pick about two or three good. Two or uh, three. Is that safe? Yeah. Is that, I feel like that might be too many. I feel like you're tempting right. me to go overboard, Kyle. All right. All right. Just do two. Just do two here, Jared. All right. Uh, let's do the Irish cream. The Irish cream, uh, by the way, Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, they sell coffee, and they do so from Ohio. Marine veterans, all that. Okay. Kyle already did all that. Uh, let's talk about the Irish cream flavored coffee. Uh, concoction of Irish whiskey. Ah, wow. Wow. Irish whiskey, coffee, cream, and sugar now captured in Irish cream coffee flavor. Uh, remarkably mellow, creamy, warming mixture that is greatly enhanced by the flavors in our premium roast coffee. Now, just, just real quick, if, if, you're, if you heard any of that and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't do sugar, I don't do dairy, no, know that that's, there, there's no actual sugar or dairy in this. So we're still sugar-free. We're still calorie-free. We're still dairy free, so you, you don't got to worry about any of that. Uh, and like all of their coffees, USDA certified um, organic, uh, as well as fair trade certified to ensure you're getting the beans of the most uh, highest quality and uh, highest morality that that you can that you can get. All right, so let's uh, let's jump to another one. Uh, we're 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 in that we're in that area. So we have the Irish cream. Well, let's talk about the grog. Kyle, I'm going to sneeze. I was fighting that one. I was like, I can get to the other side of the ad break. And then 
and then yep. I couldn't. All right. Dylan's Grog. Uh, this uh, coffee combines flavors of butterscotch rum and just a hint of vanilla roasted daily using only premium Brazilian beans. Um, it's, of course, a grog, an Irish grog, Highlander flavored coffee. Uh, it's like all other beans, a USDA certified organic and fair trade certified. Um, caution. There's a caution on this one, Kyle. I'm just letting you know there's a caution on this one. Uh, you may be talking like a pirate, a Scotsman, or an Irish boxer after consuming. So, be 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 forewarned. In case you have an allergy uh, to pirates or Scotsmans, or, or or Irish boxers, so just fair warning. So, with all of that being said, I'd like to uh, talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, is a place where you can find your new favorite coffee at IronBeanCoffee.com. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, right, Jared, Ohio you ready? State. Ohio State beating Michigan. Oh, we always like these episodes, Jared. <laughs> Ohio State beat, beats Michigan 68 to 57 in a in a classic in a classic Big Ten matchup here where it was just a very, very physical game where there was a total of 32 fouls in this game. 32 fouls. Uh is Kyle, I'm checking, I'm checking the numbers here. Um, and by my calculation, that's a lot. Yeah, that, that, that is a lot. And, okay. and w some of the things that we look at Ohio state and all right, how do they do in the stats here? Well, under 10, under 10 in the turnovers. All right. Great. All they right. had eight, they had eight, they had eight there. Uh, they, 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 they were under rebounded by Michigan, which is understandable with the size difference that Michigan had. Uh, Ohio State shot 89% from the free throw line. Great. They shot about 36% from the three-point line. Average. And they shot... Low range of acceptable. Yeah. And then they shot 50% from the field. Which is which is satisfactory. Great. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Let's not, let's not say great. Let's, let's go with good. <laughs> uh, certainly better than Michigan, though. Uh, but... Yeah, this this feels like a game where it doesn't until maybe like the last couple minutes, maybe like the last minute. This didn't ever feel like a game in which Ohio State absolutely had it in the bag or was absolutely dominating. But it, it, anytime it you looked at the score, they were up by four to eight points like it just sort of felt like it was ne it never felt great but it always felt okay is, is that a, is that a fair assessment of the general vibe of this yep. game there, there you go jared I, I i pasted the game flow here for you and exactly what you said it was stayed right about even and then right at the end there unlike unlike what they did with uh the Rutgers game it was Michigan who couldn't score for, for it was about two minutes straight, and Ohio State kept slowly climbing up, and then yeah. eventually, eventually won um, by eleven points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first half they were, I, I, I if memory serves, like yes, Austin, sort of jumping back and forth. But the second half, it just felt like they started off the second half really strong, got yes. a lead, and then just never gave that lead up. Yep, correct. Yeah, yeah, and and, <laughs> and at the beginning of the game too. Ugh, that was just ugh. <laughs> no one could shoot anything. It was just sloppy. And then the the second half of the first half, things really, uh, how I say, really got in a groove, and they didn't look back. Uh, Liddell, Liddell was just on fire in that game. Twenty eight points in this game. He had twenty eight yeah. points, five five rebounds, and three blocks in this game. One of the blocks was super pretty. I'm just gonna say it. I mean, it like was. That, that's not... going to be on the highlight. That's going to be on the highlight film here. You think it was a quiet twenty seven gangland? I thought he was openly dominating. No, he he was dominant. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm gonna and, have to disagree. And, 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 you think so? That, Austin look, says he thinks it was a quiet twenty-eight as well. Look! Look at that. Well, I didn't think so. I guess this what this one stat here. Why it might have seemed quiet, Jared? 
He was 11 for 11 on that free throw line. I, I guess, I guess, I guess that does sort of make it feel a tad bit quiet. Uh, he was very cold from behind the arc. Um, but then again, I feel like Ohio state just, has, that they just haven't been shooting uh, outside they, they of didn't, they didn't attempt that many. They only attempted eleven shots behind the three. Yeah, um, Russell seems to be the only one with a hot hand, like a truly hot hand behind the arc at the moment. Um, Arns only attempts one shot, is a, a missed three pointer. Uh, Liddell went one for five. Brenham only tried one and missed it. Um, Wheeler went one for two. Uh, yeah, they're just not having much luck behind the arc at the moment. Uh, it, it was uh, it was just the type of it was just the type of defense Michigan was playing. They were playing a zone, really really prevented Ohio State from shooting behind the three. There, trying to force Ohio State to make those mid mid jumpers, and early on Ohio State couldn't, but then got in a groove, and Ohio State um, was able to um, rip apart that that zone that Michigan was playing. Yeah, and always talking about like uh, Ohio State. Oh, this thing we've been talking about, like Ohio State's second score has been by committee, right? Where in the previous game, in, in the game against Rutgers, it was Brenham, and in this game, it was Cedric Russell. All right, sure. Get 12 points from a bench player. That's always nice. Uh, but But again... I don't know. It's this was this this is this one just felt like the EJ Liddell show, especially offensively. You know, we we don't we don't talk about Kyle Young maybe as much as we should. I, I feel like his his contribution to the team really shows up on the stat sheet. Um, someone said it. Um, yeah, Gangland said it. Uh, Brennan made the shots like when you needed him to make the shots. He he only gets six points. Uh, so he only makes three shots, but they all felt like important. Um, they felt like they came in important moments. Yeah. Again, not not a great offensive performance from the people outside of EJ Liddell that you need that offensive performance from. Mm -hmm. Key just didn't have that many minutes. He got into foul trouble. Yep. Brenham just didn't I mean, try that many shots. I mean, they, they they were they were abusing key. They were, they weren't like it wasn't it wasn't just Dickerson. It was it was a lot of the forwards that were really abusing key and like like Jared just said here, just got him into foul trouble. Young came in and you look at the stats. He had seven points, but but man, he I th I thought defensively, I thought he he did pretty well. I mean, Dickerson's going to get his shots, just <laughs> the pure size that Dickerson had over Young and everybody else too, but. I thought Young, just like how he always has been in his career at Ohio State, he's always been that hustle person. He's always been the one that really puts in that extra effort. And and I, I think it showed when you're watching the game, not necessarily in the stat line. Yeah, but that's 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 been, yeah, as you said, that's that's been Young's entire career at Ohio State. But especially this year, because, and of course, the, the, he hasn't been bad at scoring considering – He's, he's had some really nice scoring games this year, considering the amount of minutes he's put in, which isn't, you know, I don't, I don't, he doesn't start frequently. Um, he, you know, he, I don't think he goes over 30 minutes, maybe ever. So yeah, considering uh, he's very efficient, he's a very efficient yep. scorer. <laughs> yep. So I mentioned um, this time last week, Jared, their next four games, Ohio State, I, I think Ohio State, should go three and one. Well, two games in, they're one and one here. They have Minnesota and Iowa coming up this week, uh, Minnesota this Tuesday night, and then uh, Iowa next Saturday afternoon. I think I think those are both winnable games. Home, you're back home for the next three games as they will also host Indiana the following Monday as well. Uh, yeah, no. I think I think Hase can really get a good stretch of wins here to really um, elevate them in the uh, Big Ten rankings. Yeah, we really hadn't counted on, we really hadn't counted on the the Rutgers loss when we were sort of nope. uh, 
figuring out the rest of the schedule. Um, I don't know, Kyle. Yeah, my, my thoughts has... exactly Iowa, with Iowa uh, game yeah, lane. I, 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 was... I thought that, like those next four games, I thought the loss might have been to Iowa, but yeah. So, Kyle, Minnesota, Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, Maryland, Nebraska, Michigan State, Michigan. Those are the next games. Next nine games here. Is it was it nine? One, two, three, what? four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're right. Eight. Okay. All right. Just just to make sure one of us isn't crazy or stupid. <laughs> um what's what what's what's the high end record? What's the low end record? Over I would eight say... games. Honestly, there's, there's not, uh, uh, man, there's not any real easy ones. I mean, uh, there are a couple that other, are, uh, other, other are eight, of their eight games. Six of them are home. That's going to really help Ohio state out. They have um, right in the middle of these eight games is uh, at, uh, excuse me, at Illinois, at Maryland. And then at the end, they host Michigan state and host Michigan, I, I really think on the high end, I think Ohio State can go, let's say six and two. I think six and two they can finish finish the season. I think low end, four and four, five and three. Four and four would be pretty disappointing. Um, yeah. I feel like five with, and with, three, five and three. I would say is the expectation. Um, six and two would be nice, and I think it's it's possible. I'm not, I'm not saying it's it's impossible, but man, it, it's it's really tough. It is really tough to say you're going to only lose. Well, have, so so okay. Hold on. Let me let me let me rephrase. How I'm trying to say this: Iowa, Michigan State, and Illinois all left on the schedule. Those are all three very very tough games. And I'm also not mentioning teams in that stretch who are also very losable games. Michigan's a very losable game. Um, Indiana's a very losable game. There, there are very losable games in this stretch as well. But I don't know. There's, what, three uh, of these eight. What, there's about, there's three really tough ones. Maybe two games that you're outright outright expecting to win. Two, maybe three. Um, and th- you know, then there's those couples. There are those other couple that you hope to win, but are going to be tough. Is that is that a fair mm-hmm. assessment? Yeah, Th- three very, so, yeah. very, three very losable, three very winnables, and then two more that. I would say Ohio State has a greater than 50 chance of 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 winning but aren't by any means gimmies. Yeah. So, it's as as Kyle said, I mean and so so Kyle essentially nails it there cuz you can as Yeah, I think Kyle nails that. I think I think 5 and 3 is is probably the expectation but you, you can't be shocked by six and two or four and four. Yep. So currently Ohio state is sitting fifth in the big 10 standings. I man, if, if, if they go six and two here, I, I they're a game and a half behind. So I think if they go six and two, I think they'll probably end up third. I would say third in the, um, in the final standings. Yeah. And you know, you, you need to get, you, yeah. As Austin just said down in the chat, you know, you, you want to try and get the four. You want to try and get that double buy. That's, it's always the goal, right? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know, Kyle. Yep. <sighs> Possible. Likely. Not, not likely. Where, where, where are you feeling on getting into the top four? in the big 10. Yeah. I, 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 I have, I haven't even looked at the other teams uh, schedules. Who's ahead of Ohio state right now. Michigan state is a half a game is 
half a game up. Wisconsin, Purdue, one game, and then Illinois, one and a half games. I haven't looked at their schedule, but uh, so I'll go. I'll go with possible. Yeah, like under fifty percent. I say fifty fifty. It's it's okay. possible. All right. All right. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Kyle, we have some basketball-related Ask Sloopcast questions. You want to maybe knock out one or two of those? Yeah. And then uh, so, we can take what's left over and stick it in the next episode, which is an Ask yep. Sloopcast episode. All right. I, I think this one's a good one from Buckeye Zach. What should the Buckeyes do in order to become a true contender in both the Big Ten and NCAA tournament? They have to recruit better. I mean, it's, it, I think it's really that simple. And I think, by the way, they have an excellent recruiting class coming in. The recruiting class that just came in is excellent. It's a, it's about talent acquisition, and I think Ohio State's getting better at that. that. Like I said, I really like the recruiting. I really like the freshmen on the team right now, and I really like the, the recruiting class they have coming in. I, I think if they really want to compete, though, they they need to not have well-rounded recruiting classes excuse me, not just have well-rounding recruited classes, but they're going to need to start to get one of those, like, true, can't-miss NBA, even if that person's a one-and-done type player to, to in, the, in recruiting every once in a while. Yeah, I think so. Just like because what Thad Mata, what, what Thad Mata had in the... Mid mid two thousands, right? Yeah, a Buckeye Zach, a true center would not hurt. Uh, they they got a they got a kid up near your way, Kyle, who who they're recruiting. Who's uh, I want to say he's a junior in high school, and is is six ten already. He might not be done yet. Um, you, you know who I'm talking about, Kyle. For for um for next year's class, I believe so. Yeah, I believe yeah, he's in the next kid, basketball. Uh, yeah, there's a kid, uh, Felix, who's out in um Missouri. Who's yeah, he's a he's a Not six who eleven. Who I was talking about? Okay, he's a six eleven center. No, I'm, I'm talking about someone who is uh, actually uh, in in the extended family, a tad. Mm. You know who I'm talking about? Know. No, I do not, Jerry. No, nope. you don't know. I don't know. There's, there's a, there's a very tall kid with the last name Vorst. 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 What was that? Sorry, you, you broke out on my end. What was Vorst. That? Vorst. V o r s t. Oh, Vorst. Vorst. I was trying to make it extra German for some reason. You, you know who yeah. I'm talking about. I do now. I yeah. do now. He's an Ohio kid, and he's, and he's huge. That's got to be worth something. Uh, all right. Kyle, uh, any more Ask Sloopcast questions? Um, Ending with D-Lo. No, is, is, I, I, think, I, think the, I think the rest of them, Jared, let's, let's save them for the, uh, for oh, the okay. uh, Ask Sloopcast questions here. So I'll, I'll bump these for the next one here. Okay. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's calling it an episode. That's, 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 I guess what that is. We're, we're, we got um, a lot of, we got a lot of questions we'll, we'll answer for on our next episode here. Cool. cool. Um, his name's Derek, by the way, from Rossford, Ohio. Derek Wurst. I, I don't know why I feel the need to make that so German, but that's, that's where I my head's at right now. I don't know why you do either. I, cause it makes the, the, the goofy accent part of my brain happy. It, gi- it, gi- it gives me dopamine. That that would be why. Uh, he, uh, Kyle, I didn't hear what you said, but it's probably fine. Uh, Kyle, uh, by the way, everyone come join the Discord. Um, because look at all these 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 shenanigans down here in the chat having fun with us. Um, as, as yeah, the hooligans. The Sloop Cats, the Shenanigizers, uh, the Jackals, one, some of the many names that I call them. Uh, that's it. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Come join us. Uh, the better than Jared's. You know, the, the Jared's is a jack-off. 
Why? Why are, are we just being mean to me now down in the chat? Is that what's happening? I'm going to start banning people is what's going to happen. Yeah, shenanigizers. Is that a word? No. Do I care? No, I do not. Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? Uh, man, that that uh that Super Bowl game, Jared. Right. Watch that, that was me, a Austin. Great Super Bowl game. Yes, I can. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> that, that was a that was a great Super Bowl game, wasn't it? Uh, that? yeah. The way that the team that won won. Wow. Yeah. That's that's. Are we, are, we, are we just doing that thing for Kyle's Corner? Is that is that your that, plan for Kyle's Corner? Yes, Jerry. Where we that, pretend that was, to know what great... happened in the Super Bowl? Yes, that, that was crazy. Yes. Oh, yes, okay. I can't, believe, I can't believe that team won. I can't believe that thing Joe Burrow did. What, yes. a, what a great game from him. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing <laughs> that one out there. I, I, I Burrow's going to have a great game whether they win or lose. So I'm just going to go ahead and, wow, what a great game from Joe Burrow. It, right, it sure is or isn't his fault how that game turned out. <laughs> All right. All right. That's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and end today's episode. All right. Let's end today's episode. Kyle wants to end today's episode. Um, let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, should we do another Cincinnati band, Kyle? Um... In, in support of 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 our Joe Burrow and our fighting uh Buckeyes down there in in Cincinnati land. Sure. Sure, we'll do one more. Should we do uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh cuz you know, it's a, the, the games and everyone else has passed, but it's still in our future. So, let's go ahead and do one more. Uh let's see. Who who should I pick? Uh let's go with Let's go with the light wires. Uh, the it is L I G H T. The light wires out of Cincinnati, Ohio. They will be ending today's show. So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the light wires. <laughs>